So the weather's changed a lot. The sun is out, you can see the blue skies again. I'm still blocked up and feeling like crap, but it is getting better. But the last two days, we've had um, some guests from Dayton, Ohio. Put my hat on properly. Yes, that Dayton. Uh, Arch Grieve and his mum came to stay. They're traveling around Bosnia and Herzegovina. They're here for another few days, and then they're gonna take that long, long flight back. And I was asking, Arch, who is a Bosniophile, right? Great fan of this country. I asked him, how'd, how was he doing and what did he think of things? And he's on TikTok as well, so he said, well, why don't you just download my TikToks and show people? So that's what I'm gonna do. So you can see that there are other Stranats, other foreigners that really like coming to this country and talking about this country. But wherever you are in the world, do stay safe. I'm sorry, did you say you're in Mostar, but you don't know what all you should do? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Obviously, you can start off doing a little bit of shopping in the old city. This is a great place to get some gifts that you can bring back to your friends and family. Sit and grab a coffee at the Stargrad Cafe. Maybe get a new purse, like I did. Check out the bridge and be sure to use these steps, they're important. Once you get on the bridge, take a look around. That's beautiful. Once you're on the top, you can get a great view of the Koski Mehmed Pasha Mosque. I didn't on this trip, but you can go inside and you can even climb up into the minaret and get an amazing view of the city. I highly recommend doing so. In the summer, of course, this is the bridge that the divers jump off of. Red Bull even has an annual competition here. By far, my favorite place to watch them from is the Karma Cafe, so be sure to check that place out. Then go do some more shopping, see if you can find the sticker of the dude, and be sure to get another look at the bridge because it's beautiful. This is right above Labyrinth. Next, travel 15 minutes outside the city to visit Blagai, what I think is the most beautiful place on earth. The giant mountain leads to a spring, which is the start of the Buna River. At the top of the mountain, there are the remains of an ancient Roman fort. If you go to the other side, you can even hike up to it, which I've done on another trip. There are lots of shop vendors and this guy who makes amazing orange juice. I guarantee you won't find any fresher. Walk across the river and check out the beautiful birds along the way. In the summer, this path leads to where you can take a boat and go into the cave where the Buna River originates. And across the river is the main attraction, the Tekia, or Dervish Monastery. On your way back, stop by the Emporia Winery for lunch. Be sure to try some Blatina or Zilovka wine, anything on the menu. Stop for a cappuccino, then you can stop and see the Orthodox church that they are reconstructing that was destroyed during the war. Behind it, though, is a cool older church. And there's a funny love story to how this church was founded that I don't have time to tell you in this video, but you should check it out sometime. Next up, go and get dessert at one of the three Aldi's. It was great catching up with friends here, and the desserts are all amazing, as is the coffee and the food. After that, go and visit the Catholic Church, also newly reconstructed. If you get there at the right time, you can go up into this giant tower and see a great view of the city. It's almost time for dinner now, so head back into the old city. If you want, stop again for some Bosnian coffee. Then head over to Labyrinth, where you will get an amazing dinner and desserts. Next up, meet up with your friends who have your old Yugo. Just hang out and drive around the city. There's nothing more quintessentially Balkan than driving around in a Yugo. You might also want to hit up a local bar. No Flash is my favorite, but obviously I can't show you the insides. And if you don't make friends with a cat named Tito, can you really say that you've been to Bosnia and Herzegovina? Yes, yes you can. And I hope you'll come and check out Mostar sometime soon. Did you say you only have one day to see Sarajevo and you woke up at 10.30 a.m. and you want to see it all? All right, I got you. Start off at the Markele Market. Then hit up the Catholic Church. It's pretty. Check out some of the shops downtown. Then you're going to walk across the meeting of cultures and into the old city. There you'll see the Ghazi Huzrebek Mosque. And of course, you'll need to get some Bosnian coffee. Try the Tufahia, it's great. Then walk across the street and get whatever this delicious bread stuff is that they put kaimak and honey on. Mmm. Next, you're going to want to backtrack a little bit and check out this cool indoor market and the outside of it, too. Wander down the street a little bit and see where World War I started. And right across from that is one of my favorite places to buy gifts. All local artists. Backtrack a bit towards the Catholic Church and check out the Galleria. It's a pretty sobering place that memorializes the genocide that took place here. You'll see some videos about the war, some art that they used to try to get the international community to intervene, and most importantly, you'll learn about the victims of this war. And you can even hear from survivors. There's also a memorial to those who lost their lives at the genocide that took place in Srebrenica. Over 8,000 people. Up next, stop by the old Jewish synagogue. 
that's been around in one form or another since the Ottoman era, which was surprisingly tolerant. It's also a really cool museum. If you're a smoker, grab some drinks, then head to the Sebi Fountain. The superstition goes that if you drink from the fountain, you'll always return to Sarajevo. Works every time for me. Next, grab some coffee to take home with you. Maybe some crystals if you're into that. Then you want to walk across the river. You'll get a nice view of City Hall, which displaced the restaurant that we're going to, the Spite House. So called because its original owner refused to move his house when the Austro-Hungarians wanted to build City Hall there. He finally moved if they would give him a bag of gold and rebuild it brick by brick across the river. Get the bay's soup. Next up, we're gonna go up on that hill and check out the Yellow Fortress. I'm not gonna lie, it's a hike, but it's only about 12 minutes and the views are nice. But it's only when you get to the top that you see why it's really worth the hike. You get an amazing view of the city from here. Of course, it's time for coffee again, so head down the street and get some coffee at this little cafe. I got some more Bosnian coffee and an iced latte. It's called Camaria. If you're there around sunset, be sure to go back and check it out because it's definitely worth the view. If you're there in winter, grab some salop and you can get Turkish Delight and baklava anytime. Head over to my friend's bar, Walter 071, get some rakia. If you're lucky enough to be there on Orthodox Christmas Eve, go check out the Old Orthodox Church. There's a very cool ceremony that comes complete with mulled red wine. It's delicious. Next up, grab some dinner. Go do some ice skating if you want. Grab a red candy apple, some hookah and then head over to the city pub. Okay, yes, I promise in a few seconds I will tell you five things you can do in Banja Luka in under three hours. But first, let's start the day off right. I'm staying at the home of my friend David, or as he's better known, an Englishman in the Balkans. Go follow him, you will not regret it. All right, now that we've got our iced coffee, our first stop is the Orthodox Church. The Cathedral of Christ the Savior was originally built between the World Wars and was finished just in time to be bombed two years later by the Germans then ripped apart by the Ustasche. Beautiful church that's there now was finished in 2004. Next, you're gonna to wanna to head down the street towards the mosque, but before you get there, if it's winter, you might be able to find a Christmas market. If you missed the video I did on Sarajevo, they had one as well, and you should definitely go check that video out too if you haven't seen it yet, but you can get a lot of great stuff, including maid or honey. Next up is the Ferhat Pasha Mosque, or Ferhadia. Legend has it that at a battle at the Croatian border in the 1500s, Ferhad Pasha came into possession of a Habsburg general's head and his living son, both of which he gave back in return for the ransom money that went to help fund the construction of this mosque, which I think is just a cool story. Of course, it was also destroyed during the war as well and is now a jigsaw puzzle of both old and new materials. All right, now backtrack a little bit and head through the market. You'll find all kinds of stuff, including some wool slippers, which make great gifts. After you go through the market, it's just a short walk to the Castle Fortress. Archaeologists believe that this was settled even during Illyrian times, before the Romans. But the Romans certainly built it up, and the Ottoman Turks made it what it is today. You can still see artifacts, though, from Roman times, like this Roman sarcophagus. What's even cooler, though, is that you can eat there. It has great food and amazing views of the River Verbus. Last place I'll take you is the Contemporary Art Museum in the middle of the city. But while I do that, I want to read a poem called Inner Man by Charles Simich, a famous Serb poet who died while we were visiting the city. It isn't the body that's a stranger, it's someone else. We poke the same ugly mug at the world. When I scratch, he scratches too. There are women who claim to have held him. A dog follows me about. It might be his. If I'm quiet, he's quieter, so I forget him. Yet as I bend down to tie my shoelaces, he's standing up. We cast a single shadow. Whose shadow? I'd like to say he was in the beginning and he'll be in the end, but one can't be sure. At night, as I sit, shuffling the cards of our silence, I say to him, Though you utter every one of my words, you are a stranger. It's time you spoke.